I'm going to begin a club by asking. I mean, the Selfish Giant was, of course, based on the Oscar Wilde story, and this is based on Trespass. I, was, I mean, do you like having those kind of relatively loose guidelines when when writing a story, a kind of reference point, I suppose, where these are very they, these are very, these are quite loose adaptations. They're not mm. strict or anything like that. But at the same time, it must be quite nice to have that structure behind you to help you craft your own sort of tale off the back of. Yeah, it does seem that. Um adaptation and, and it's, it's, it seems to, seems to go across all three films and it's not a conscious thing but it's um, but but it's and the, the next film I'm thinking about doing is, is a similar I'm following a similar sort of process um, and I don't know whether it's about having wanting a framework or it's more about um, about what happens if you if you take something and you put it somewhere else um, and the, the what's thrown up by that. Mm. And um, so, because I was in, did this begin as a straight up adaptation? Did it change along the course of, of the way? It did begin as a straight mm. adaptation, yeah. And then, um, and then actually Film 4 s said I should make it mine. And so that's what I kind of then went ahead and did and, and really thought about what it was, the essence of uh, the, the novel that, that captured me. And also, of course, in terms of adaptation, there are things that you can do in a novel that you can't do on screen. So accessing Alice, um, Alice's internal world or even Joe's internal world um, is really straightforward in a novel. Or, you know, or you've got the tools to do it, I mean, uh, whereas it's quite difficult on film. I mean, this is obviously now becoming my new favourite subgenre of cinema is Yorkshire farm set movies, because this and God's Own Country have come out obviously yeah. in the same year. Um, what do you think it is about the... This, the farm that makes for such a, a good kind of location. Do you think, because I mean, it's, it's that kind of sense of isolation, I guess, it heightens the, the character's loneliness in some ways. I mean, I loved God's Own Country. I thought it was fantastic. And I think um, that it's, I think that there's something about the politics of the countryside, uh, about the politics of land and um, our relationship with nature that's, that's kind of in the air. Because there's also the levelling, you know, I think, um, I think, uh, th there's a kind of, uh, I suppose it's like rural realism, which is quite hard to say. Um, <laughs> and, what, you know, another film that I absolutely love is Winter's Bone. Mm -hmm. And I was very struck by its representation of r rural poverty um, and marginalisation. And I think that that's something that we haven't really looked at very much here. So, yeah. I mean, the story, I mean, of course, it's, it's some quite bleak themes are being explored here, but there is a real beauty to, the, to this film and the, and the way it's been told. But was that something you had to kind of consciously achieve? When, when you've got uh, characters and, and a storyline which is, is as, as upsetting as this, is it one of those things when you're making it to just try and uh, prevent it being unrelentingly bleak and try and sort of counteract the, the storyline with actually a beautiful shot of the landscape and, and to try and find some beauty within the characters as well? Yeah, I think you needed to understand why Alice wanted to go back there. And, um, you know, I think it's, it is an incredibly beautiful place. Um, and I think that there's also uh, something very uh, vulnerable and tender in Joe um, that he's, he can't see for himself, so he kind of acts out his... Um, bec because he feels guilty, he carries this burden of guilt, he kind of, he kind of acts out his aggression to kind of confirm for himself that he's bad in a way. And I think Alice has locked something down that she um, feels that she just needs to keep going um, in order to and be strong. Whereas in a way, what they both need to do is to kind of be vulnerable in a way, which is, which is obviously really difficult. So I think there's something very um, beautiful that's possible within their relationship that both of them are trying to Try, trying to get to and and um, finally you know I think they are able to arrive there arrive at that point by the end of the film and to help both actors kind of act, really kind of access these 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 roles was it I, I imagine so much must be done through conversations with yourself in the sense that there isn't a huge amount of dialogue so I guess helping them understand what the cat is going through and thinking in certain moments was kind of done just through speaking to you as opposed to reading it on, on the script yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, you'd have to ask them in a way how much of it was conveyed uh, on the page in the script. I mean, I tried to make the dialogue as sparse as possible, and then because their performances were so strong, it meant that I could take more and more dialogue away. And in a way, it's about how what remains unspoken has has damaged both of them. 
Um, so trying to um, have as little spoken as possible was, was, was a real challenge, you know. Um, and one of the one of the films that I one of the films there's a film about sexual abuse within the family which I think is absolutely fantastic is Feston, mm -hmm. and in a way that's about that's that's all about what is spoken because um, you know it's all based around um, a series of speeches, uh, and in a way what I was trying to do was was really hard which was to to say what happens if it isn't you know it isn't spoken. Um, and they can't speak to each other. So it was, it was hard, you know. Mm. We did a school performance of Festum when I was did about you? 15. That was quite, that was wow. quite a tough one. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> um, but I mean, I'd, Ruth is, is in, incredible in this. I mean, that must be, I because mean, obviously it's such a, a, a nuanced performance and, and a character that, that it requires so an incredible actor really to take it on. Yeah. You must have been thrilled to have her on board and just watching her do her thing on set must have been kind of overwhelming at times. Yeah, it was absolutely thrilling to have her on board. And she's, yeah, I mean, she's, she's brilliant and totally committed. She can give you a, kind of any nuance. She's incredibly intelligent, incredibly instinctive um, and, you know, it's kind of that f total commitment that she's going to learn to shear sheep and make it look absolutely authentic, you know, and she had to do the accent as well. It was, it was kind of a, very demanding of her. And Mark, similarly, I think is an incredible act of full commitment. Um, and yeah, I mean, that was the great joy of the film, really, was was working with the two of them and seeing what where they took it and what they could do with it. Um, you know, Mark told me that the night that Richard, you know, uh, the dad died, he got in his lorry and he drove until the petrol ran out. You know, so they were making decisions that I didn't even necessarily know about in terms of their preparation for, of the of their characters. And um, I mean, obviously, in the last couple of movies as well, children have played such a huge part. What mm. was, I mean, I guess what they must bring to a set is a kind of energy and a kind of blissful sense of kind of um, optimism about the whole industry and everything about it. I mean, did you miss that? aspect on this film not having uh, child actors but in some ways was it also quite a relief sometimes just to to not have to I guess it, it can be a challenge directing children at the same time yeah I guess a bit of both yeah in some ways um you know I loved working with Connor and Sean um it was very different because a lot of the time it was about kind of encouraging them to get on set and keep going and um uh, you know because it's it's hard work being an, being an actor so um and with, with Ruth and Mark, it was much more about kind of being able to hand something over in some ways, um, or the three of us really working together. Um, whereas with Connor and Sean, it was much more about needing to kind of support them and uh, kind of help them understand where their character was at that any particular time. Um, so they needed a lot of my attention. And just finally then, I'm just wondering about the collaboration with PJ Harvey on this, and I love the Acre of Land song. Mm. Um, how did that sort of first come about? She wrote me a letter, which I was absolutely thrilled about because I've loved her work for a really long time. So she saw The Selfish Giant and um, she wrote to me. And then we met and, um, and discussed possibly uh, doing something together. And I sent her the script for um, Dark River uh, which and she she absolutely loved it and she actually grew up on a sheep farm and had been writing poems about sheep and re reading the same um, poems that I've been reading there's, there's this Ted Ted Hughes poem called Ted Hughes uh, poems called Moortown Diary that he when he was farming he he kind of would write these poems so um, it was kind of this perfect fit somehow um, and. I worked with the same composer, Harry Escott, who, who did the score for The Arbor and The Selfish Giant and Dark River. And I like a very minimal score. Um, so the only room for something melodic really is at the beginning at the end. And so we knew we wanted a song um, that, that PJ Harvey would sing. Um, so we all met up together and we actually all came with the same idea, set of kind of similar ideas. Um, and then about two thirds of the way through the editing process, we realized what that song needed to be and Harry wrote um, the tune to An Acre of Land and then yeah, PJ came and sang it. And um, you know, the, the, I love Let England Shake and I love White Chalk and I think there's, there's her, she, she has made work that is about the land and in a way that's, it seemed like a perfect fit to me mm. that way.
Yeah. Thanks so much for your time today. Much appreciated. Thank yeah, you. thanks so Please. much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!